It's been a while, a long while, almost too long since we've taken our last first look at a new update for Ostrieve. Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here. And yes, indeed, one of the greatest city builders I've ever played in terms of resource management and survival has a big update and it's completely free. Not to mention the developer now has a new DLC and it all is spectacular and glorious. Well, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't seen this game before, think of maybe a little bit of Anno 1800, but it's the 1700s. Now think a little bit of Banished and sprinkle in elements of perhaps Farthest Frontier and also some foundation and you have yourself Ostrieve. Made by a very small dev team, if not just one person from Ukraine, and of course dealing with what they're dealing with now with their uh, country being invaded, I'm absolutely floored that they've created an update and an update that is so damn polished and incredible. Just like we have all the times before for update two, three, four, and now on to five, we're taking our first look, gonna build a new city. And if you guys wanna see a full playthrough, smash that like button and get it up to over a thousand likes. Let's go, let's show our love for Raptoria and Ostrieve and for a game that really truly seems like a person who is passionate about games making a game for gamers. Well, just so you know, this game is still currently only $24.99 on Steam, and that's not even the discount price. That's the like base full price of the game. And uh, so if you're a gamer on a budget, make sure you add it to your wish list and wait for like a summer sale or a w winter sale or something like that. And also, instead of increasing the price as more and more is being added to this game over time, the developer has simply just made a DLC for one building for $10 that you can get if you want to, and the reviews on that one are just basically shut up and take my money for most of the people who've downloaded and tried that out and so that's kind of nice keeps the price low for everybody else but if you want to support the dev and get more content one piece of content that's only decorative which we'll take a look at here today you can do that all right no more blabbing let's jump into our first look at update or alpha 5 for Ostrieve. let's go
Ah, yes, the foundations of a new city. All right, let's go ahead and get started at all the things new in Update 5. So, first of all, we got ourselves a worker here finishing up a clay pit that now has completed construction, but there's something a little different this time around. Resources now are found in resources where those resources are found, or I guess in areas where they're found. So, for example, here the clay is found here in all the areas in green, but not in red. Before, you could put a clay pit anywhere, which kind of meant that... You could put it basically where you plan to build a future industrial area or right next to the town to make it fast to build homes. But in this case, it'll turn red wherever the resource is not found and green where it is found. Additionally, we also have sand as a, a sand pit. So, of course, just like with the uh, clay pit, sand is found wherever and those two together are used to make bricks. So you might have to transport clay from one side of the map and sand from the other in order to make those bricks, but oftentimes it looks like with it being pretty plentiful, you can find an area to put both. And by the way, that's not the only thing new. Check out this new map. Yeah, we have a big O new map to explore in Austria. This is map number two if you update your game uh, currently. It is one that is uh, twisted, like a kind of a spear here in Twisted River. And also, by the way, it's quite hilly. You can see all the different little uh, rolling hills here that come down to the valley and also something that I see here, iron ore. Check it out. Yeah, this is an unlimited resource right now, but perhaps in future updates the developer will make it more finite. Typically, what happens in this game is that a new resource is introduced and then the way it's gathered and or the way it's traded and its price and a lot of other things change as players become more accustomed to it. So, we now have a new building to gather our new resource, which of course is, well, if you guessed it, the iron ore mine. Congratulations, you did well. Yeah, so here we have a hopper next to the iron ore mine where the workers can come on in and mine that iron ore. It's unlimited, remember. And then they'll bring it out to the hopper to where then you can bring that off to your smithy in order to make nails, horseshoes, and metal parts, or of course, trade it directly on the river or land routes that you have. Now, of course, that's probably gonna be best transported via a wagon or to have the smithy next to the mine too and also the operations for like charcoal. So it's entirely possible to build an industrial area next to your mine, and then of course have charcoal uh, being produced from firewood nearby, and then convert that all into metal and perhaps trade that if that's what you want to do. Now this is the only map I've seen at the moment to have this iron ore, so just look for the rocks kind of near this area. There could be more. This is all I've found so far, but it's the only map that I've found that has this so far, and also this is the only area I've found to have that so far. In addition to that, we also have ourselves a new building to get started once you've got your city building. You can see all the little flags here. This is where all of our future buildings will be built. We have a lot of new things, including a small granary, but we'll get into that in just a moment. We got tons of new buildings to take a look at, and a lot of them are beautiful row houses and also late game buildings. So for those of you who get burned out like I was for a while with building all the suburban looking villages, there's a lot of new stuff in store. Let's jump forward in time in our starter city so we can take a look at more of the update. All right, the city's getting a little further along now, and if you recall a lot of Austria before, or even if you don't, a lot of what players will do is to build a nice little tight network of homes at the start in order to house the nine families that are at the starting camp. Now, of course, you can place the starting camp anywhere that you want with some restrictions, but, you know, it's a good idea to put it always down by a river so they have access to fish and uh, water, and, of course, eventually you're going to come to water anyway in order to cross it to get somewhere else. Austria, of course... Uh, is basically island in Ukrainian and of course there almost is like an island in every little sector of this game based on you being cut off by either a river or a lake. Now one of the next things that is going to be really important here is to be able to store all of these lovely little uh, food items that everybody's creating. Once you've created those nine homes all of these people who are farming can share it with everyone else and so basically you can set up the city government to buy the extra food from the homes and pay the homeowner uh, for growing them and then share it with the next neighbor who th can then buy them. So one of the new items that we have is a smaller granary which is perfect for building inside your little um, starting area. Now what I love here is the developer has of course included uh, the building model so we can take a look at that every time that you put them down you can see what it'll look like before you place it so that's kind of nice. Now of course you can hit F to see the building in 360 degrees and this is again a new free building that has about I think less than half of the original granary storage so it's really nice and compact to put in your markets so that way you can basically have like a neighborhood that's almost independent perhaps imagine us having a huge city over here and over here it was like a little mining camp so we could have all these homes essentially just be self-sufficient and then sell things back to each other uh, here at the marketplace and also with the granary so it's a great idea to kind of keep things uh, a little more organized in a smaller space very very effective 
Now, speaking of homes, oh yeah, I know you can see it already. All those row houses, we'll take a look at in just a minute, and they are incredible. But some other things I wanted to take a look at is also pavement. Yeah, we can actually build paved roads now in the game, and you can essentially just mark wherever people are walking and turn that into a paved road. And of course, you get stone through the stone mine, but I believe also maybe perhaps the iron mine. I have yet to check it, but it would be quite awesome if the iron mine or any other mining operations provided extra stone so that way you can put it on the roads. Now, I also am not sure, but I'm thinking that perhaps wagons or also carts such as this might have higher speed and less impact on their durability based on them taking these roads. So if somebody was to take these roads, roads where we're going, we don't need roads, but in this case we do because it's only 1721. But if we build these, of course, workers will come out to actually build the road and we'll have to deliver stone. And then of course it would increase people's building or rather moving speed and possibly durability and or possibly um, it just looks nice really and it's a nice thing to um, cr perhaps create a main street in your town all the other roads could be little alleys but if you're starting to build those gorgeous row houses it's certainly going to start feeling like a major city from the 1700s all the way into the 1800s too now speaking of 1800s a lot of buildings from them are made of brick and earlier I had mentioned that we, of course, have clay and we have sand pits now, and check out the beautiful new buildings you can build with them. So one of the most powerful resources in this game, or industries, is farming. Really, it's like the only industry. And, uh, of course, not only can you sell things of iron and uh, uh, maybe perhaps charcoal to your neighbors, but also now, big moneymaker here, including sunflower oil, and sunflowers is the distillery and the brewery check it out so this building you can see the smokestack there made of brick and then painted a beautiful white color like that just absolutely gorgeous these little buildings like this we can kind of take a look around it and it is really nicely detailed uh the roof of course made of wood the walls you can kind of see is a painted brick it might be a little hard to see but yeah even the little smokestack there all made from brick which then of course has to be made from your brick layer or your brick maker so pretty cool. So this building <clears throat> is a little different than the other one we saw just a moment ago too. Uh, the brewery and the distillery are both completely different in terms of what they can produce. So they're essentially the same with having a smokestack and being a building that can take workers and take one resource and turn it into something else and something that's probably going to be highly profitable. But these two have two different recipes that create two different things, two different inputs and two different outputs. So if we take a look again, the brewery produces beer from barley and hops. It also takes uh, 6,900 nice bricks and a bit of sand and uh, also uh, limestone and some other stuff in there. And then the uh, distillery produces something called horlica from wheat. So we have two different types of alcohol that we can produce with two different uh, costs for the recipe. 1,800 stone and 2,400 stone, for example, for these two breweries and distilleries, and they look gorgeous. And that's going to be a big end game money maker for sure. Absolutely. Also, we have another new building for the. Um, let's see if we can find it here. Oh, uh, this is old, but the smeltery, uh, of course, is another good thing to use uh, in addition to the smithy. So before, when I said, hey, just use the smithy or whatnot, uh, the smeltery is a better way to do this industrialized. So as I mentioned, those industrial uh, areas before, yeah, putting your smeltery down here. This is part of a previous update. But this is something that can go into that whole complex of having an iron ore mine, and uh, it's really cool. And I hope we get more designs for buildings that possibly take other resources that we might have more of. Now, another new thing, speaking of water, just like with the uh, smeltery there, is this little uh, well. It's just made of stone and wood, and it looks really nice. It almost reminds me of like a Japanese shrine. It's kind of cool. But yeah, so no more do you have to have the uh, little uh, water... Uh, docks or the basic well like this. This is a good one for starting. This is a good one for industries But if you're trying to keep things more compact, you can actually put in the uh, little well like this So that's quite nice. So yeah much better to you know, this will freeze over in the winter So this is good for industries that might be using that during the summer And I think they can't use it because the water could be dangerous for drinking water so drinking water has to come through uh, the two wells here and then this one here as it says source of water for livestock and production needs so good to put it near a farm or industrial areas now there is a few new things in terms of decorations and there is like some new uh, bushes such as the lilac bush and i believe there's also the uh, perhaps this rose bush here and uh, no new trees that i've seen so far but just a couple of new things to detail and put down that look real pretty so if we click on the lilac 
you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, it is now October, so they're not uh, blooming, but all the plants in this game do go through a process of blooming, and then their leaves do fall off for the autumn season, unless they're, of course, uh, evergreen, so that's something to consider. And something for the very first time in this game, a health building. A barber. Interesting. Barber surgery provides barber service as well as basic medical procedures. So check that out. One of the uh, first buildings now in the medical tab. I actually am really surprised to see it. Now I'm not exactly sure how it works in terms of people getting sick or it just being something to boost happiness. To this day, I don't see people uh, becoming wounded or injured or ill or having a disease. Uh, and I don't think I've ever seen accidents such as a, a mine collapse, although that could be new. Take a look at the patch notes. I didn't see anything like that to note. But uh, I do love how this building looks. And this roof on this building is really reminiscent of what all of the other homes are going to look like, too. All the row houses. So this would fit in perfectly to a neighborhood. And this color is just beautiful. It's just really nice with the gray, the white, and the brown. Just a really cool looking building and really nice art. Like on the side, the, the brickwork is just gorgeous, really gorgeous. So it's it's certainly a building that is going to be almost more of a monument than anything else. So really cool. All right, let's jump forward in time a little bit and see the city develop, and I'll show you some more buildings. Let's go. Well, things in the city are going well. They've survived their first winter and now have 10 buildings here, so we have room for a few more people to move in. So that's going well. Now, once this area gets completely filled, typically the idea would be to start cutting down trees here and be able to start expanding the city a bit more and possibly using some of this land for farming. Now, one thing that I've seen, and I'm not sure if this is new in a previous update, but I'm just gonna mention it because it's very important for all the new buildings that we have to put down because we have more of them now, is the ability to mark trees for removal where they'll be painted with an X and also to unmark trees. And that's kind of a basic feature that wasn't here. The uh, workers from the forestry building would cut down trees in pretty much 360 degrees with whatever ones were closest. But this now allows us to leave a few trees alone for decorative purposes. So here I left a few of the spruce trees uh, nearby the lumber mills to just look nice. And then, of course, people will cut them down as soon as they can, starting, I think, with the closest ones. But that's pretty nice. There's also an option to plant trees, too, which before we had to build like a specific field for it, and uh, this is that same option to do that. So, yeah, you can build a nice square, uh, I don't know, larger, medium size, uh, cordoned off area to be able to plant some more trees and cut them down again. So there's nothing saying that you have to cut down all these trees to then build your city. You could just cut out a little notch and then put a forest there and keep renewing it so you don't have to cut this all down. But if you do, then you have your option to uh, build all the new buildings in there, which is quite nice. Now, speaking of other new buildings, we're going to take a look at... Um, Something else that just came to my mind here that I remember uh, seeing for the first time, too, is the large haystack. That, again, could be old, but it looks like the developer is putting in more and more options for large and small storage of all types. So this essentially is just like the uh, hay bunker from before, or barracks or whatever, and this just stores more of it. So, again, options for small and options for large, depending on how big you want your farms, which is pretty nice. I know. I know you're looking at those buildings. Just wait. I know. I know. But let's go ahead and take a look at anything else that comes to mind here. The brewery, of course. Also, the hop yard. So to go with those two, we actually have uh, this building here. Yeah, the little... Uh, it's almost like the orchard. It's a hops uh, farm, essentially. Like a little hops orchard. What do they call it? The hoppery? I actually didn't even look. It is called the... Um, yeah, the hop yard, I guess. Like a vineyard. Uh, it doesn't look like it matters where you put this yet, but I would like to see that in the future of the game as some sort of fertility, although that might be a little too restrictive, especially if you settle over here and the only fertility is on the other side of the map. But a very basic building, just a little uh, farmhouse in the middle with a bunch of um, little sticks or whatever to hold the hops and let them grow, and uh, they basically grow on that. Farmers come over to take care of the crops, and then they harvest them, and then either bring them to your... Uh, distillery slash brewery whichever is which and then also for trade or storage so pretty nice little building pretty similar to the orchard just to compare the two the orchard looks like this so they're pretty similar different jobs and different um, buildings but essentially the same thing so pretty cool on that one now another thing i just noticed too is the option to build a fueling mill now this is something i hadn't seen before uh, produces broadcloth from wool. Oh, yeah. I saw the trailer for it, which you have at the uh, start of the uh, video, and I was trying to figure out what the heck this thing was, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a, a boat uh, from a previous update, but again, we're getting more heavy industries that'll be perfect for uh, building, you know, nice little walls around and building some coastal 
uh, buildings on, so it's going to be nice to put the row houses down near these areas to make it look like they're a lot more permanent settlements that are almost like ports. So I think this and a few other things would be perfect for this. Again, this isn't necessarily new, but it's one that I had either forgotten or got really excited about finding out what they are again, and I really like that. So another thing we could do is uh, the... Let's go through all of this stuff. Slaughterhouse. Oh, yeah. Iron ore mines, sand pits. Uh, where's the brickworks? That's what I'm looking for. There she is. Yeah, another new building that really reminds me a lot of perhaps the forestry building. Looking a little bit like that. And also the smithy kind of put together. Parts of that one. At least it looks like to me. But yeah, the brickworks. So we take sand and we take clay and we throw it into this building with some charcoal and out comes some bricks. So these buildings um, are going to be necessary for building the end game like, I don't know, tier 5, whatever you want to call it, uh, house. The row houses, which seem like they should have something in between before you build those. But this is what's going to be needed for the distillery and the brewery and all the row houses and the surgery building too. And the decorative building that I have yet to show you for the DLC. Alright, we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, the next thing. And let's watch this city grow. Let's go. Success! The small granary is now complete, and all we have to do is, well, just get everybody in town to start buying goods from the neighbors, and it looks like we've set that up. There's a nice little button up here that you can use to set resources that are being grown by the neighbors to be automatically gathered, and then you can tell your people to go and purchase them. So we're already starting to gather peas and honey, and it looks like, I just heard, oh yeah, looks like some people just moved in here. They come in via wagon and or people can be born, and here we go, another house is being, uh, occupied by the residents and so we'll have to build some more but once this all gets full it is time to build our bigger houses and of course with bigger houses means bigger appetites so it's a good idea to build multiple markets now one of what I'm about to show you is the row houses and I'll get to one that might possibly have a store which I really want to put to use soon well there's our first look at what it is uh, almost like a mod it when I first saw it I was like no way is this part of the update there's no way and it also reminds me of what could be a mod in uh, Banish. But no, we of officially have have row houses. I can't believe it. I can't say it any other way. They're here, and they look beautiful. You can see all of the brickwork on the sides again, all the detailing. And then, of course, all the beautiful windows and the roof, too. Really cool that this seems to mostly take bricks to build with the roof of some of the buildings, like, for example, the school, taking a lot more wood to build. If we take a look at that building, I think it's under, is it government buildings? Well, if we take a look at the construction office, yeah, that's pretty basic there. But let's take a look at the school if we can. Maybe that's under, well, let's see. Oh, education. There's a specific building for it. Yeah. yeah, you can see all the woodwork on the sides towards the top. Yeah, and you can also see some of the work as well on the religious buildings, such as the large church. No real brickwork on that. It's all wood, of course. Must be like a sauna in there. But all of that is a crazy amount of wood to hold up uh, the roof, as where the bricks are able to do that really easily. Oh, this has a different uh, roof style to it as well. So it looks like every time we click, there seems to be a different, possibly, variety to them. Now, one thing... Oh, I clicked on the other one here. But uh, one thing that I've noticed in the trailer is that these buildings actually will snap together. And so we can uh, take one of the first building types and this building type and put them side by side. But we can also put them in an angle. So if this building here were a row house uh, that was facing this way at 90 degrees, we could also maybe place it like this and have it kind of filled in a little bit. And so you can have the buildings kind of turn. You could almost build like a, like a horseshoe shape or something along those lines. And another incredible thing that I can't get over is the alleyways. Do you see that? The little pathway right there on the left side? Yeah. So if you wanted an opening to an industrial area... Horses and buggies and wagons and carts and other people can go through this little alleyway and so you could have this built in front of an industrial area and maybe have it divert traffic through. So you could have like a nice little housing network up here and have it open up into like the smithy. So if you had a large industrial area here, you could kind of have this like as the entryway. So that means all the people who work here could live in this house and all the traffic that comes in and out to bring them supplies or ship out the goods could go right through the building and then of course you could build onto that so you could build that building and then you could add another one onto it here's all the other styles for the other row houses too uh, of which this one seems to be a shop according to this this says that it's a row house plus store and two floors 
So I'm not sure if this is a row house that is a uh, like a residential building on top and then a store on the bottom. I've yet to build it and experiment, but if this actually were a marketplace, this would be incredible. The people who live at the market or work at the marketplace could live above it and the marketplace could just simply be put in town. It could just simply be a shop for selling shoes or clothing or uh, things like uh, sunflower seeds or perhaps tools. Uh, although that's not in the game, but really it could just be something that could be in the town rather than as kind of its own area and would save a bit of space rather than having an open marketplace. So people could do their grocery shopping here, go buy hardware stuff. It's going to be really cool to actually deploy that. Now we have buildings that are three stories too. So we have uh, another one here and the final building that also looks like the previous building, but of three stories. So obviously the bigger the better on these buildings, or at least the more materials that they're going to take and the better they look. But man, that is beautifully detailed. I love that. I wish we could paint all the other buildings like uh, Numham in uh, Denmark, the uh, you know buildings with blue, yellow, red, green, that kind of thing for around the harbor. Uh, another building here. Yep. Same thing. Alleyway. Check it out. And uh, has multiple stories and what looks to be a little bit of an attic at the top. And then a large chimney for all the uh, fireplaces that'll be connected in between now this building says that it's a housing unit for multiple families uh, some of these don't necessarily say so it says two floors so i'm assuming two families and three floors which i could only imagine is three families unless it's a store so we take a look at the next building yep that's the one with the alleyway as well there's one without the alleyway and then the one with the store so yeah essentially all the same uh, kind of hard to tell, but they all definitely look a little different, but I would appreciate a sign or something out in front. Uh, but this seems to be the main entrance for this building, at least for the store. And this seems like it could be a, a side or a rear entrance, uh, depending on how you build it. Now, what's cool about these is that it's not like we're going to just be building one individual row house, you know, separately. These are going to be in a row. So you can make a large, beautiful main street and then change that up as time goes on. So you could build maybe one of these and one with a store then one with an alleyway, and then you could just kind of keep going down the whole block. Now, this also is great for density because we can make a huge city in a small area and keep a ton of people in it without having to have a sprawling area where people are going to have to walk forever. And so this means that you could build, yeah, a little village to start as your um, farming area. And then once you're producing enough food, we can make this like, you know, Gamlastan or something like that, like the old city. We could build some beautiful uh, high density almost buildings here where it's going to hold four times as many or three times as many people as this building would. I mean, look, look at the footprint. It's just slightly bigger than the house, but it is much taller. So it also could be more efficient for fuel because if fuel is going to be delivered, it could uh, possibly keep more houses warm for less people. In other words, you know, each of these houses has to be individually heated. You see the smokestacks spewing out white smoke that's from firewood. Well, perhaps these uh, townhouses or row houses might use less wood to keep it warm. And here comes winter, too. So the timing is perfect on that for keeping warm. So a few experimentations, but that is a massive upgrade to this game. And not only do we get like one or two new buildings, but it's actually like six. And they're all different with alleyways multiple stories and storage and i absolutely love that all right ooh, winter's coming let's watch the snowfall this game has an incredible site for snowfall like this i just love it when it happens other games that uh, do snowfall as well that really impressed me is farthest frontier although i still think that Austria has a slightly better farming system with it using uh, cattle or oxen rather to plow it farthest frontier does allow you to uh, have the cattle go to the farm field and you, you know, uh, do what they do and all that manure goes into it. Ostrave also has that with the ability to have cows graze on that. So uh, plowing from animals and auto grazing or like assigning cows to a field and then also allowing your workforce to go and work on a farm, but then they can take the season off when it snows because obviously there's not much for farmers to do in the winter. Once they start working you know, or quit work and go to, uh, you know, another job, you can assign them to something such as a forestry building for the winter. And so they could also do construction in the winter. And that's a big time to build in this game. Whenever it's winter, it's a great time to build new houses and a great time to uh, try to build anything or complete stuff that you started on during the summer because you'll have that added workforce. And that's really important. And I think that's a great thing. And those are the things that this game does better than what I've seen from uh, other 
I guess, survival city builders, and even better than um, Manor Lords so far. This game has a lot to do with Manor Lords 2 in terms of the building of Manor Lords and this game being somewhat similar, where a building, when constructed, you'll see all the pieces put into place, and though I haven't shown it yet, I think we'll build something so we can actually see uh, those get taken care of. But let's watch all the snow come in. It is gorgeous. You'll see the snow accumulating on the ground. And winter is here. Now the same thing happens for the paths. Then eventually it kind of gets plowed as people walk on it more. And I wonder if that would make these uh, cobblestone or paved pathways more important because even with the winter, people could move faster. Not sure if they slow down, but I guess with a game that's as realistic as this, it might be a good thing to consider. All right, let's go ahead and build a building and uh, see what else is new, shall we? Okay, so it's February, almost mid-February of the next year, and more supplies are being delivered via cart. And that, of course, includes the clay and the thatch, wood beams, and nails that are needed for at least these two new homes here. Luckily, we can click on anything and uh, see what it is. Another good thing, if you don't know in this game, is that you can move construction around by clicking and dragging things in the construction queue. Really well done, honestly. I really like that. So it looks like this building will be the next one to be constructed. And we've got a good amount of uh, workers on that. And just like in Manor Lords and other games, all those uh, materials have to be brought to the position. And yeah. People are actually coming out to build the foundation on this one. And really cool. The foundation, of course, to make things sit flat. And they do a good job of uh, animating every building like this. So this means that the row houses in this game are going to be animated for whenever bricks are delivered. And or the, the distillery or any other large structure such as the granary back there. Which is pretty big. It's about the size of a house. And it's a pretty big house. And um, yeah. So even when we build a church... Everything has its own animation. Everything is its own character in this game when it comes to construction. The barns, the fishing docks, the boathouses, uh, even the uh, mills and uh, the smeltery. All are fascinating to watch be built, of course, because a worker or multiple workers will come to construct them. Probably one of the most fascinating ones to me still has got to be when the uh, forestry building is constructed. You'll see many workers going up there, and that's pretty much the first thing that gets built. Workers will build everything that they need to on site and or bring it over from your initial starting area. And then once that's done, they start to build everything. A cool thing in, the, in this game too is the schedule on the right side where it says village house. You'll see where it says wood, nail, work, clay, and thatch. It actually is showing you what needs to be delivered in between construction. So anytime that there's uh, work being done, it's because the pre requisite step has been completed for delivery so when things start it's wood and nail then it moves on to a little bit of work then clay is delivered and it could be done in any order really but uh, it's cool it's really cool that they can start work before all the materials are here and things are done in phases so obviously thatch doesn't need to be here and if it's kind of missing and we're still gathering it before it's dried of course thatch being the uh, reeds and stuff down here it's basically gathered up, all these grasses and other things dried out, and then can be brought to a site for construction for a roof. And that's kind of a really easy way to do it, and you can make a lot of it. And you can see we've got about 420 in storage here, so if we were waiting for some of it to dry, all of this could be uh, being done right now. The foundation constructed, the walls put up, and then eventually uh, the clay on the side of the building. Now, if you haven't seen these buildings before or really look closely... All of these are completely different. All these buildings look a little different. You can see the roofs are different. Some areas have wood. Some don't. Some have thatch. Some don't. In terms of some of the uh, corners and edges, chimneys are in different locations. Some of them are in the middle of the house. Some are on the sides or in the backside. And some of them have more windows than others. I don't know. It's fascinating. I would really hope to see something like this in medieval dynasty or other construction games where all of the parts and pieces have to be brought to the correct position and then and put in it's not like the scaffolding's popping up out of the ground and this building's just magically being grown no we actually have somebody doing construction here and <laughs> all by hand and literally by bringing it to the position they need to be in so if, as you see them putting up a clay wall they actually go to that position I, i'm fascinated by this all being programmed you know, each little piece of uh, the construction phase had to be programmed in. And I've seen construction games that don't even do it this way. You know, it's all just kind of like uh, behind the scenes or it's just easy mode. So things aren't actually brought where they need to be. But in this case, 
they are. And I hope that happens in something like Manor Lords, for example. And it seems to be. All right, spring is here. Spring has sprung, and the construction is nearly complete on a house. Beautiful. Can't play the update. Can't play this game without seeing some of the animations of the construction. It's just, it's, it's delightful. Very satisfying. Ah, they're almost done. Okay. Now just the remaining roof pieces to put on. The rest of the construction crew should come over. And we'll see it complete. Let's see what we have for construction. Just two guys, yeah. Everybody else is working on farming now, or fishing, I should say. And uh, let's go ahead and slow things down as we watch this complete. And also, I guess they are farming because they will be soon in their own homes. They're all going to be farmers. Everybody has that as like a basic skill. Almost done. There it goes. little bit more to do so I would hire more workers but the people who just moved in are already assigned to forestry and or carpentry so we'll, we need to build more homes to attract more people so this will get faster and faster as time goes on which is why we want to start with getting a lot of these small homes up first but the farms once we have the farming done and then once we build those row houses we can start fitting again you know three times as many people into this space if we ha have housing for 30 here and we're able to get that up to like a hundred in the same space, somewhere around there. That's crazy. We can get a hundred people here, which means we could dedicate about 50 to a farm that we could build up here. Another 20 or so to the industry, and the rest of them would probably be uh, children who would go to school, and women who could also work at the thatchery and or uh, work on also doing charcoal, which is very important for the logging or the uh, industry of um, of the smithies and the smelteries and the iron ore. And they're going to be trucking that around, which is pretty damn cool. Now, one final thing to show you is the very ever-important DLC, which can be seen pretty much, uh, well, you may have already seen it on this page here. The Patron of the Arts Monument. Yeah. Well, this is what you get for plopping this down. Essentially, a building that is built with, uh, well, it looks like a very nice plaster building. And it looks like uh, it's made with 1,700 bricks. Looks like also some limestone, which is probably why it's uh, white there. With the sand, planks, and some nails for the roof. So this is kind of cool. We can put this in the middle of our town and make it as a, like a monument. So you can put it in a town square. You could put this on the end of bridges to like kind of act as like a, you know, a way for, uh, you know, to mark the bridges. You'd have people walk to the bridge and then kind of go through this little tunnel on either side. You know, this arch. And you can put it here and there, or you can put it on all the corners or whatever, or at the end of a street. You can put this thing anywhere, as many times as you wanted, and it's just kind of nice. And I don't think it adds anything, but it might actually add uh, some sort of desirability, although I don't think that's a thing in the game. There is a, if you click on an empty house, you'll see, well, somebody already moved in quickly. But uh, yeah, you'll see that they need to have like uh, jobs and food and I think there needs to be access to, uh, maybe at a certain point, religion and surgery and things like that. Maybe it'll be in the end game, but those are things that are going to be required, and I think that's pretty awesome. So yeah, this is what you get for 10 bucks is just, just that building. Everything else that I showed you is free, so long as you buy the game. But the only thing that costs $10 is this. As far as I could tell, the Patrons of the Arts Monument. So this is how the developer is funding uh, the development. And I assume that they could probably add more stuff to it in the future, uh, to the DLC pack to add more buildings, more benches, other things like that. Just for decorative purposes, I think that's kind of nice. Looks a little cozy. And it kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, like an amusement park entrance. Like every amusement park seems to have this style of like, uh, well, you see it a lot in Boston. Uh, but this, of course, is like old European style. And it's a lot on the East Coast in the United States where a lot of things look like this around uh, Virginia and the Atlantic Coast. 
where buildings look like this, and so thus a lot of theme parks have something that looks like that. I don't know what you call it, colonial style, I suppose, but that certainly seems to be, I guess, the best way to put that. Well, what an update, huh? And what a nice little town. Now, this was about three hours of work during a live stream with all of you guys, and we basically just got started with about a year and a half of gameplay. And we went through all this stuff before, uh, but we dived a little more in depth now on some things. And I want to take a look at the Steam store page now as one last little peek at everything that may have changed. And uh, yeah, so it takes about three hours maybe to get your base uh, settlement up and getting into farming, especially if you're kind of playing slow like I do, uh, taking a look at all the new stuff. And that's probably a good thing to plan out in the future. But let's take a look at the Steam store page. Let's go. All right, so one last thing here to take a look at the Ostrave store page where the community hub is, where we can then find news regarding Ostrave, including the Alpha 5 that's been released. And then, of course, we can see uh, news about the trailer and then more detailed uh, information about all the buildings that we may have missed, such as the dairy. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't show off, including uh, the construction of the... Well, the, it's basically a building to uh, take the milk and turn it into butter, cheese, and... Uh, smetana, or smetana I, however you say that, it's, apparently it's a type of yogurt, is what my chat tells me. But this building here will take all the milk that we can get from the barns and convert that into more products that can sell for even higher amounts. Now, going back to what I was saying before about the uh, granaries, yeah, there's actually spoilage now, so we'll have to worry about making sure we don't make too much of a certain thing unless we sell it or preserve it in a granary. So making sure everything's stored is going to be incredibly important, so no more can we like store tons of stuff at the market. Not that we did, but um, lots of good patch notes here, though, confirming pretty much everything that we saw, including a barber. Yeah, the surgery building that we saw uh, just before is a perfect building for the town. A little gazebo there. And nicely uh, decorated too. The smaller granary that we saw, the brickworks that we saw, the brewery and the distillery, and all the things that are needed to do that, including the hop yard. And we also have a little bit more information about uh, some uh, information regarding whether or not they live in the same house, some UI fixes, better visualization for failed crops, uh, the sand pit, which is a new building, and then of course the limited uh, supplies of suitable places for building. Uh, the clay pits and sand pits and also I would imagine that might apply to mines and then also the paved roads which looks beautiful really looks nice we also have the iron mine that we saw just moments ago and then also the new map which we were building on so all of that was new as well as information from the uh, citizens sharing their thoughts and opinions every once in a while the map is still the same but the UI for trading has been adjusted and of course those beautiful row houses that we saw and the stone well. And then a lot of fixes regarding all the things that were possibly crashing or creating issues for everybody. And the new DLC, which came out today as well, March 25th. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, uh, that's pretty much it right there, boom. And they show you the building right there. You can decorate it, uh, build around it, add as many of them as you want. It's kind of a quote unquote monument, more of just a, a decorative item that kind of acts like a monument because you can kind of put it as a centerpiece or just use it as decoration. That's pretty much it. Yeah, with everybody saying, uh, you know, positive reviews, 21 people being happy with that being only mm, 10 bucks. So cool that the devs making that a DLC rather than making it a, um, you know, like an added price and in, in adding that to the game. So anyway, Austria, very beautiful. If you want to check more of the complete patch notes for yourself, make sure you go to that community hub and the news page. But Austria, one hell of a show, man. So we're going to come back and live stream this game a lot more in the future. So if you want to see more, show Ostrief some love. Smash that like button. Get her up well past the thousand. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Hopefully we see you on here sometime soon for more, either on the videos or the live streams or what seems to be like a very wow, beautiful uh, game that's gotten even more beautiful. Can't wait to play more. Can't wait to see you all next time. That's it for now. See ya. Thanks for watching.